Well, hello, hello, and hello. <laughs> Yay, I am so excited. Welcome to the Sacred Pathway to Liberated Black Womanhood, episode one. Yes, yes. I'm just so excited right now to be um, doing this with the newly remixed podcast. Now, first of all, I'm Allison Rozell. I am the Pathway Priestess. Yes, I coined myself that. (laughs) And yeah, so I want to let you know that if you've been following me and if you were part of the Starting Over at 40 movement, you are still in the right place, love. You still are in the right place. You can still find the uh, podcast episodes for seasons one and two. They're attached to this podcast. So I didn't break them up. I didn't like do anything like that where you'd have to go to one and then the other because honestly, that's too much work. (laughs) And I just, you know, I I hit a bit of a lazy streak on stuff like that. And I just want to make things just as quick and simple as humanly possible for myself and for you. So, um, welcome, welcome, welcome. So today's topic, we are going to talk about the blessing is in the journey. Mm -hmm. And the reason why this topic is coming up is, um, When I did the um, new moon reading recently, some of the things that were coming up, and if you um, have listened to or watched the new moon in Virgo reading, you'll know that I brought this up. If you haven't listened to or watched it, watched that, then you can go to YouTube, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, all those places where you found me now (laughs) and you can listen. It's actually one of the uh, bonus episodes, part of the pre-launch, if you will. So the topic, um, well, some of the topics that we brought up, I just, that was something that kind of like fell out when I was speaking. I was like, you know, the blessing is in the journey. You know, we get caught up in the, in the end result. And we don't celebrate and recognize the blessing that's in our journey, which is really what the sacred pathway is all about. So if you will indulge me, I want to go deeper into that um, very topic. First and foremost, I'm setting the mood for myself. Um, I've got my candle burning. This is actually... um, for my third eye uh, because of the indigo color. And um, I've been pulling cards for myself and it's been a lot of things that I'm recognizing um, for my third eye. So it was my, and is my intention that right now at the time of this recording, um, that's where my attention is gonna go for me. But I like to have it lit because it just kind of gives me a different kind of atmosphere as I sit here and talk to you. So I don't know if you can hear that background noise. My apartment complex is close to railroads. So sometimes you might hear a train go by. That's what you're hearing. (laughs) But treat it like the the wizard did on the Wizard of Oz. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Yeah, pay no attention to what you hear in the background. So, um, let's first start off and let's pull a card. Because if we're going to celebrate episode one, if we're going to jump into this thing and set this thing off right, let's get us a card pulled. So, I'm going to pull from the very first deck that I ever bought, African Goddess Affirmation Cards by (laughs) Abiola Abram. She will kill me if she knew that I was about to mess up her name (laughs) Uh, because I do know her. Um, So those are the very first 
cards that I bought and I love them. Um, this is actually the second deck that I bought. My first deck, um, I was led to give some of those cards away when I did a, an a event. So um, since they are the first deck I ever bought, they hold sentimental value to me. Plus they're very powerful cards. So I was like, yeah, I gotta get me a new deck so I can have my cards that I've lost. So let's go ahead, just take a deep breath. Set our intention. And this is for the good of all involved, all that's watching. We want to pull a card that is for our highest good that will keep us aligned with the message that I have to give today about the blessing in the journey. It's good to take a deep breath sometimes and just get yourself grounded and centered. So let's get, let's get the shuffling here. I've gotten better with my shuffling, y'all. I really have. I gotta pay attention because <laughs> if I start looking at the camera and trying to do it, yeah, yeah, those cars will go everywhere. And some people are like, well, how long do you shuffle until you start feeling that, like, okay, stop, <laughs> like I just felt. I'm thinking, do I split or no? And I don't think so. Oh yes, this is perfect. Goddess of the stars, I always tell myself the truth. I always tell myself the truth. And this is dot goddess Gliti or Gliti. I don't know how to pronounce their names. Um, usually I don't read the lesson on here, but I'll go ahead and do that um, because it is important. What do you know for sure? Hmm. How do you connect with the highest energy? What is your source of truth? Is your quiet time an indulgence or daily practice? Wow, this is very aligned with what I'm about to talk about. If you have seven minutes, you have time to meditate. Taking a pause to reconnect and ground yourself is an act of unconditional self-love and self-care. Meditate on this thought with the shining light of Glitty, Diomi, goddess of the stars. So, I always tell myself the truth. So that's awesome sauce. Um, because like I said, that one little nugget plays very nicely into my message that I have for you. Back in the box. <laughs> All right, so if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my notes, but I will look <laughs> at you and make sure you know you got me. Okay, so the blessing is in the journey. So let me just give you all a little um, something, something about my transition from the starting over at 40 movement to the sacred pathway to liberated black womanhood. So I'm not going to go all off into my starting over story. Um, if you want to know about that, go back to episode one of the starting over at 40 podcast. And I give you a whole rundown of who I am, who I be, how I got on the starting over journey and all that jazz. Um, but starting off, I can't say that I always knew that I was going to be a coach. I can't say that for sure. At one point in time, I thought I was going to be a pastor, a preacher. I really did. And it's because I have preachers in my family, my father's sisters, at least two of them are ministers. And then one of my cousins on my father's side is also a minister. Um, and I would say one, but actually it's, it's a couple of them that are, you know, my cousins that are ministers. So I, I, 
at one point I felt like that was what I may end up doing. Um, I know there was talk uh, amongst them one day with me um, stating that that would be something that maybe I would consider. For a little while, I thought about it, well, I don't like that long. <laughs> and then I realized something. I cannot be a minister of something that I'm having a hard time with um, going all in in my beliefs in believing. Sorry, I guess with positions here. Um, so that was something that I knew um, I was not going to be able to do. Plus, you know, all the stuff that you can't do, I like to do frequently. So I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> so I knew that was not quite it. But I also felt like there was a higher calling, a higher purpose for me. It was just a matter of me like fully embracing and tapping into what that is, what that meant. And I always figured eventually it would come to me. So I didn't like lose sleep over it or nothing like that. So around 2015, um, I started blogging. And what I was blogging about, um, like I said, I don't want to go too far into the starting over story. But I want to give you a gist, especially if you're new to me. Um, so I started blogging in 2015 and my, my blog was called As I Live, I've Learned. So what this was, was um, just basically me writing blog posts and sometimes doing videos on some of the experiences that I've had in my spiritual journey, in my, my journey of rediscovery um, or discovery of myself because now I was an empty nester, my son was grown, you know, so now I had time to really just kind of like think about me and think about what I wanted with my life, who I am, and all these other questions that I needed to answer. Um, as so many women, uh, when we're mothers, we, we devote all our time. Our children are our lives. And, you know, everything we do is for them. And that's not a, a terrible thing. I don't ever want you to think it's a terrible thing because it is part of your journey. But we lose so much of ourselves when we start um, diving deep into being a mother. Um, so by the time he was grown, I was like, okay, yeah, um, I'm trying to tell him about him finding himself and I don't even know who the hell I am. So we got a problem. So that blog was basically me learning some things about myself, finding some things about myself and my spirituality, um, who I am as a person, as a mother, you know, finding my identity and, and all this other stuff. So with that blog, I um, started listening to a particular podcast. And on this podcast, I um, came to hear from a particular person who um, I always say changed my life for the better. And um, she is the creator of the cards we just read, Abiola Abrams. <laughs> she changed my life um, in so many ways because she spoke my language. She spoke to my heart. She um, wrote a book. She had a book that I read. You know, I've read it a couple of times. I bought her cards. You know, I um, hired her as my coach. And these were all things that were part of the process of me getting to where I am now. Now, I said all that to say this. When you first start on your journey, 
of self-discovery because that's essentially what it is. You're, you're going on the journey to do some self-discovery to kind of to figure out who you are, what you want, you know, uh, why you want what you want and, and all this other fun stuff that comes up <laughs> when you're doing self-discovery. So as that went along, um, she encouraged me to go deeper and she was like, you're a coach and you just don't know it or you don't want to step in it for whatever reason, but that's who you are. You, you totally are. And I was like, I am me. Who's going to listen to me? You know how messed up my life is? Who wants to hear from me? Like, seriously, this girl here? Okay. Um, <laughs> sure. So I prayed on it, thought about it. I was like, okay, I'm going to give this a shot and see. Because as I thought about it more and more, as I sat with it more and more, I started realizing that this was it. This is what I needed to do. So with that came new blog, podcast, coaching, the whole shebang. There was something wrong. Not like terribly wrong, but wrong. The issue was I was not operating fully in what I really, really wanted. Because see, when I first got the call in to be a coach, I was told and I was led to black women because I don't know, I'm a black woman <laughs> and I understand black women because I am one, I'm the daughter of one, the granddaughter of one, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, but I got afraid to do that, to really step into that because I was like, well, you know, I don't want to single out black women. I don't want to, you know, leave out, you know, what if there's a white woman that wants my help for something, you know, why would I deny her if she really wants to work with me and yada, yada, yada. Um, never mind the fact that the very podcast that brought me to my uh, coach was called Happy Black Woman Podcast. <laughs> and it's specifically for black women. But I was stubborn because I was like, you know, I don't want to isolate anybody. I don't want to offend. I want to make sure everybody's good, you know, getting all off into that people please and shit that gets us all caught up. You know, it's like, I don't want to leave money on the table, you know, by just strictly focusing on black women. And then you have people in your ear saying, uh, black women don't want these programs. They're not going to buy these programs from you. They don't, they're not going to get coaching from you because you know how black women can be sometimes. And then it's like, but how can black women be sometimes? Let's talk, let's think about that. It's really unfortunate that within our own race that we have these thoughts and ideals about ourselves. And usually those come from a place of it's, it's you and not everybody, you know. So to say that Black women will not, you know, purchase my programs, will not sign up for coaching for me, will not be able to relate to what I'm talking about, or any of those things like that. Um, it's just really just bullshit. And, you know, I fell for it because I was scared. You know, honestly, I was. And then I was like, you know, back at that time, my I had a different Facebook page and I had all these people from like my hometown and all this stuff. And I'm like, they already think I'm cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. They're going to really think I done dove off the deep end, like with, <laughs> you know, holding the hands of like Farrakhan and, and Malcolm X and any other militant black person that they can think of that, you know, I read about and read and listen to speeches of and everything else. I don't have a problem with them. I love listening to, you know, um, Minister Farrakhan sometimes and listening to 
those recordings of um, Malcolm X, love them. But I was so scared. I was so scared. Like, it just, it was just so like, ugh. So I just kept and proceeded with the safe. You know, it was safe to be Coach Roz. Yeah, it was safe to, you know, do the sacred pathway. I mean, excuse me, um, starting over at 40. And I'm looking at my phone right now because I want to find this that I just saw. Regina King has a quote that says, the comfort zones are where your dreams go to die. And I'm paraphrasing, but it says comfort zones are where dreams go to die. No truer words, because I was killing and sabotaging my own dreams, my own happiness, my own abundance and everything else by playing it safe, by not doing what I was, got that tap on the shoulder to do because I was afraid. And, you know, then I was like, again, I don't want to leave money on the table. I don't want to isolate. I don't want to do all this blah, 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 that I did. <laughs> so the interesting thing that happened, happened to not just me, but many of us, everyone all across the world, our nation our world came to a complete <laughs> halt. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. Let me adjust myself again because uh, I like sitting on the floor because I feel grounded when I do that. But after a while, my leg goes to sleep, so yeah. But I still like to sit on the floor. Um, so yeah, the coronavirus. That, when that hit, and then we started going into um, stay in place, shelter in place. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> now, mind you, I honestly started getting the tap of shift at the beginning of the year. And actually, if I really would be truthful, it started happening last year, like before Thanksgiving. So 2019 before Thanksgiving. Yeah, I was already starting to get that tap on the shoulder. Like, you know, you need to change your business, right? You know, you can't do starting over at 40 forever, right? you know you're supposed to be working with black women, right? <laughs> so I'm like, yes, I know, but I want to do this and I want to do that. And I want to, you know, do things the way that I had planned. Because, you know, I bought this really pretty and I wish I had it near me, um, planner, law of attraction planner, like I did the year before. The year before I bought, one and it was rose gold and it was really cute and pink goldish pretty and then this time around i had bought for 2020 it was purple oh, it was such a deep beautiful purple like a like a prince purple and you know i love prince and it was just pretty and every single thing that I wrote in that thing to plan out 2020 is now crap. It's all crap. It was crap when I was writing it anyway, because I was still under the guise of I'm going to stay in my safety zone. I'm going to keep trying to build something that actually is done. And I know you're like, well, what does this have to do with the blessing in the journey? Well, if you hold your horses, I will get there. I just need you to stay with me. <laughs> so as I'm writing this stuff at the beginning of the year, it actually, 
and I'm going to be very honest. When I got that beautiful purple planner, it was actually harder to fill it out because with the law of attraction planner, if you've never bought one, it's really detailed. You don't just go in there and write, okay, so for February, I want to do this, that, and the third. No, 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 no. With the Law of Attraction Planner, you are planning the year and some change. Meaning, what it's trying to show you is, if you have a goal, a 10-year goal, what you're doing right now directly affects you in 10 years. So, you need to start planning for that 10 years, but what are you going to do right now to get you to that goal in 10 years? Stay with me. So remember I said before Thanksgiving, I was getting the tap of change, shift, movement. The three words that were my, because every year I have a word for the new year. And it's either a word or it's a group of words. You know, one year was flow. The, another year was juicy abundance. So this year was, it was reconnect, rebirth or renew, excuse me, and repurpose. Didn't know why those three words came to me. Didn't understand the depth of those words. But they came to me at the end of 2019 to be my words for 2020. And that was also around the time I got my planner. So I had planned out all this fabulous stuff, fabulous stuff for the starting over at 40 movement. Oh, honey, I was going to go all out. Uh, yeah, COVID-19 hit and that shut all that shit down for real. All those events that I was going to hold. Nope, can't do them. The retreat that I had with a partner of mine, yeah, can't do that either. Um, some of the retreats that I was going to attend myself, yeah, no, um, yeah, no, 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 and no. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, crap. So I'm looking in my beautiful purple journal, and I'm looking at all the beautiful plans that I had and I felt so disconnected from every single one of them and I was like this is all it so coronavirus stay in place that we had back in March and April <clears throat> forced many of us to sit still and start to kind of reevaluate some things. And one thing that came to me, um, and this was in a reading that I was doing, it came up that this was going to be a time where there's going to be some truth to come out. And then another healer friend of mine, who's also going to be on the podcast, Regina Sewell, she said, this is a moment of sacred surrender. And I was like, oh, how beautiful to get <clears throat> some truth from the process of sacred surrender. Oh, wow. So I was like, okay, so what am I supposed to do now? Because nothing that I'm trying to do is working. Um, Cause I was like, I'm just going to continue as usual, get online and, and just start doing stuff. Well, I tried to create an online event. Wah, 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 wah. Nobody signed up for it. Nobody signed up for it. Not even friends signed up for it. Okay. <laughs> I tried to do challenges. I tried to do all this stuff and none of it was in alignment. None of it was in alignment. This is why I'm saying the blessing is in the journey because in the journey, you start seeing things and noticing things and experiencing things that get you to where you're trying to go 
along the pathway. So, like I said, stay with me. Ahmaud Aubrey. I, I, nothing else could come to mind. That's the best thing that I could say is his name, Ahmaud Aubrey. Breonna Taylor. George Floyd. Back to back to back. And then some. Anger, frustration, hurt, sadness, traumatic pain, back to anger, back to frustration, back to sadness, back to sick to my stomach. Couldn't, just could not, could not sleep, could not think because for it to happen back to back to back and we're all stuck at home. We're all looking at the news. All this stuff is, is, is just, uh, <laughs> just, uh. And it started becoming so incredibly clear. I need to work with black women. I am supposed to work with black women. Why? Because sure, I could be a coach for all the other races and nationalities. But African American women have a particular kind of trauma, particular kinds of blocks, energetic blocks, emotional blocks, mental blocks that need special care and attention. And since I am a black woman who is the mother of a black man, the daughter of a black man, the sister of a black man, the auntie of a black man, the cousin of black men, the niece of black men. And then we can't forget that black women are also targeted by police brutality. And not to mention the fact that black women um, and black girls are targeted in sex trafficking and um, all kinds of, of violence of rape and just total just degradation and frustration. And then black women are bombarded with all these bullshit messages of your lips are too big or your butt is not big enough or you're supposed to look like this. And then you have these women like the Kardashians that, you know, plump up and change so they can have all these black woman features and, you know, you have all these others. And I'm not trashing the Kardashians, but let's just call a spade a spade. You have all these other non-black women doing all these things to themselves so that they can have big butts and black woman features. The very things that black women were criticized about for having for years and years and called ugly and fat and unattractive and all these things. Oh, now, now you want to have them. Okay. Okay. And then just the the pain of you know as a mother that another mother lost her child to senseless violence and the thing that came to me first the first thing that came to me is actually an event that i'm going to hold the uh, first full moon of september of october excuse me black women breathe that's the first thing that came to me because it's time for black women to take a collective breath. It's time for us to catch our breath. It's time for us to step into our power. So transitioning from the starting over at 40 to the sacred pathway was a blessing in that journey because had I not stepped out and did starting over at 40, 
it would have been harder, I think, for me to fully step into this new platform of the sacred pathway of liberate, liberated Black womanhood. So within my own journey, me being on my own sacred pathway, I had to understand that this sacred pathway is about, first of all, unlearn, learn, and relearn everything. <laughs> you got stuff you're going to have to unlearn. There's some new things I need to learn. And then there's some things that are going to have to be brought to my remembrance for me to relearn but learn them in a different way so that I can experience them in a different way. Secondly, I need to celebrate the journey. Celebrating the journey is so important. Celebrating the good, the bad, and the ugly. Why? Because they all contribute to working for my good, working for your good. We, we don't take the time to celebrate our milestones. That's something that is going to be huge that we talk about is our LBWs, our Liberated Black Womanhood Milestones, moments of your life where you feel or felt most liberated. You know, I have some of my LBWs as especially when I first went natural and I cut all my hair off and I did the big chop. Very liberating. <laughs> When I finally decided that it was time for me to be comfortable in my own skin, whether I was fat or whether I was thin, very liberating. When I could look myself in the mirror and say, oh my God, you are gorgeous. Yes, I can say that to myself, very liberating. And then lastly, I had to find myself so I could find my tribe. I can find my people, the people who... I want to be around that, you know, it's not just me doing work to keep them in my life. It's reciprocated and appreciated. So let's talk about four things that shifted for me that I want to help you as you're on the sacred pathway. So number one, habits. Ugh, yes, habits. We got good habits and we got bad habits. The bad habits, we're going to keep calling habits. The good habits, we're going to call routines and rituals. So some of the bad habits that I had, I had them because I'm sitting there trying to hold on to um, certain people or, or whatever. Um, some of it stemmed from trying to fit in so I could feel worthy, um, so I could feel validated. So I had bad habits like smoking. Um, I had bad habits that I still have when it comes to eating, because you can see I ain't no little bitty person, but I'm getting better. And I don't torture myself on that anymore. Other bad habits, those are things that, again, that fall under that unlearn. Because there are some habits that we have that are taught to us. And it's, sometimes it's not a direct teaching. Sometimes it's kind of indirect. Like, um, I love my mama. But one of the things I learned from her of indirectly is to eat my feelings. So if I'm feeling down, if I feel sad or whatever, then I need to eat to make myself feel better. And I think a lot of people have that. <laughs> so, you know, those are some of the bad habits. So I've in turn turned those into good habits. I stopped smoking. So I stopped smoking years ago, like over a decade, well over a decade, like a couple of decades ago. Well, not a couple just yet, but yeah, almost two decades, almost. Um... Something that I would say for myself, and I'm not saying this is bad, you know, for anybody else, but for me, it just did not, the reason why I even got started doing it was me trying to fit in, and that was smoking weed. Um, originally, I did it because I wanted to fit in with my friends. My friends were doing it. My boyfriend was doing it. So that's what I did. 
Well, I stopped doing that because I realized something. It's, I'm not saying I didn't like how it made me feel, <laughs> but I started realizing that I can't experience life the way I want to if I'm high because I get a high from the experiences. Now that's just me, but that's how I go through life and how I experience life. Cause again, for me, I look at it as the blessing is in the journey. You know, it's when I go on a road trip and I've never been to the, wherever the destination is, the fun is getting there, you know, is the drive there. You know, especially if it's a long road trip, if it's just like an hour or something, that ain't nothing. But like if it's a few hours, that can be a lot of fun. And even like recently, myself and my fam my my son and my mother, um, we decided to step out and have a little bit of a road trip here in Georgia. And we went to this orchard, apple orchard. Um, and they have like a country store. Oh my God, that store is the bomb. <laughs> I cannot wait to go again. But it's here in Georgia. It took like an hour and a half to get there. We had never been there before. I'd never been to that part of Georgia before. And I'd say as a black person, kind of gets a little nervous when you start getting in spots where you don't see nobody that look like you. <laughs> so you just drive and you you're very aware of where you're going. Um, but I also know that this particular destination, as well as another destination that is on the way there, is frequented, frequented by Black people and other people of color. So I was like, okay, I, I think I can do this because they, they're used to seeing us. It's just that we might not live <laughs> around here too much. So, um, that road trip was like really fun. It was, it was a lot of fun because again, I saw things that in Atlanta, I don't get to see, you know, you don't get to see a whole lot of like farms and, and stuff like that around here. And, you know, or just like grassland and just land, a whole lot of land. It was beautiful. So the journey is what's fun. The journey is the blessing because you get to tell stories about the journey. When you get to the end, there's no story in that. <laughs> the story comes from you getting there, you going there. So the habits that I dropped helped me start to experience life in a different way. I also don't drink alcohol the way that I used to. I used to drink a lot. I used to get like totally like not to the level of being an alcoholic but if I went out with my friends oh my gosh we were getting lit <laughs> and again I can't say I did not enjoy it and did not have fun because I did but once again the the way that I am now I want to experience it soberly so I might have a cocktail every now and then but drinking just isn't the same for me it's just not, you know, some people, you know, enjoy it and, and want to do it a lot. That's just not me anymore. And I'm fine with that. So some of the things that I've started that are good are my rituals. So this is some of the things that I want to help you with in building healthy rituals and routines. So when I get up in the morning, I give thanks. I come and I sit by my altar, which is right here next to me. Um, I light my prayer candle. I, you know, pick whatever deck of cards I'm going to use. And I will sit. I turn my meditation music on and put my earbuds in. Um, sometimes I don't always listen to music. But here lately, excuse me, I've been listening to a lot of African drum music, a lot of African style meditation and it's really been making me feel like really connected so I've been listening to that and 
I sit at my altar, I pull my card for the day or cards, whatever I'm led to do. And I enjoy that part of my morning. If I don't do that, my morning is kind of like messed up. It, it sets the tone for the rest of my day. So I look forward to doing it in the morning. It's a part of me now. Another part of my morning is I drink water. That's, you know, early in the morning. As soon as I get up, I drink a cup of water. Um, and that's something that I had started doing years ago when I read um, Miracle Morning for real estate agents. I used to be a real estate agent. And that was one of the parts of the Miracle Morning routine was to drink a cup of water in the morning. Well, I fell off of that because, you know, I don't really, well, I didn't really like water that much, <laughs> but I know I need it. So what I've started to do is I make that ritual and I make it sacred. See, that's the thing in this journey. You have to decide what you can do to make it sacred. Because when you make it sacred, when you make it ritual, when it becomes a part of you and a part of your everyday life, it just makes it where now you have to do it. You know, it's the same thing like with me sitting in front of my altar. I sit in front of my altar and I drink my water and I set my intentions. I pull my cards. I do all these things. And if I don't do that in the morning, like I said, it throws my day off. It's like, okay, at some point during the day, I'm going to have to do this because my day is thrown if I don't do it. So it's a part of me. So the second thing that shifted, people. Yes, people. People are going to shift in your life. You already know this. You know, especially when you get to this age, you know, friends come and go. You know, you're lucky and fortunate if you still have the same friends that you've had for like decades um, and whatnot. But that's not always the case. It's not always the case. And what I've learned is um, I've gained and lost a lot of friends. And that just came with my evolution. You know, there are some people who, they're not totally out of my life, but they've been bumped down from friends to associates. And it's not because they did anything wrong. It's just that now the things that matter to me, that are important to me, um, I can't talk to them about that stuff. And if I can't talk to you about it, the things that are important to me, the things that matter to me, um, and feel the energy of you, you know, wanting to hear what I have to say and not just listening, just to listen, you know, be like, yeah, I don't really care, but you know, I'm supposed to be a friend, so I'll just listen to it. I don't want to feel that way. So, you know, I don't have them as who I would call friends. I have a very small circle of women, and right now it's just women. There have been men in my life, but women that I consider really good friends. It's a very small circle. And you know what? Years ago, younger version of me would have had a big problem with that because I always wanted a lot of friends. But now, not so much. So, you know, I've gained friends. I've lost friends. There are some people who I've just lost completely, don't talk to. You know, if I see them, I'll be like, hey, how you doing? You know, we'll do all that, the nice pleasantries. But no. And that's okay. That is part of the blessing of the journey is you lose some friends, but you gain more. Because remember, when you find yourself, you'll start evolving in such a way that you will attract the people who are supposed to be in your life to you. And you'll kind of repel the people who aren't supposed to be there. Because some friends, they just fall away. It's like, okay, that season is done with that person. Now I have had friends where I'm, I've tried my damnedest to keep them in my life because you know, I'm a Leo. Leos were extremely loyal. Um, 
because once we're a friend, we're a friend. You know, you got damn near kill us to get rid of us. <laughs> Either kill us or really screw us over like royally in order for us to be like, yeah, we're done here. We're done. Um, so yeah, friends, people. And that also includes family, by the way. Yeah, unfortunately. Mindsets, mindsets. Um, some of your mindsets are going to shift. That's part of the blessing of the journey is the fact that my old mindset was I need a lot of friends. My new mindset is mm, not so much. Mm, I'm good with that. Um, my old mindset was mm, if I don't get high with these people or drink with these people, they won't be my friends. They won't, they'll think I'm weird. They'll think I'm square. They, they'll think that, you know, I'm not cool to be around or fun. Um, who wants to be around that person? You know, that's not doing what everybody else is doing. <laughs> So your mindset shifts. I used to battle with feeling worthy, still battle with it sometimes, but not as much as I used to. Feeling worthy of, of love, of abundance, of peace, of joy, of bliss, of pleasure, just all those things that I now would not dare deny myself at all. Because I know I'm more than worthy and deserving of all of those good things. So mindsets are going to shift, you know, mindsets about how you think about money, how you think about um, love, how do you think about um, friendships and your relationships with your children and um, your, how you view work and career and school and all these different things. So my mind has shifted in so many ways. And I, I used to beat myself up in the fact that I didn't finish getting my degree. And um, sometimes previously I had found myself kind of shrinking down because I have friends who do have their degrees. Matter of fact, I think almost all of my friends <laughs> have a degree and I don't. And I used to shrink because, you know, I felt like who am I to open up my mouth and say anything? But then I'm like, but wait a minute. I got experience. While they were getting a degree, I got life experience. <laughs> what you read about, I lived. So <laughs> it's just a matter of, of changing the perspective, changing your mindset and realizing that we're all doing what we're called to do or supposed to be doing what we're called to do. And, you know, getting my degree just wasn't, my jam it just wasn't the thing for me to do so i don't lose sleep over it now i feel like eventually i probably will go and finish it but right now it's not it's not a priority for me and i'm cool with that i'm really cool with that um mindsets regarding um like i talked about at the top of the show was you know black women don't want to have coaching they don't want to purchase courses or get Reiki healing or Oracle card readings or all this old stupid stuff. And I'm like, I can't believe I even fell into that, but I know it was a place of fear. Lastly, desires. Your desires change. The things that you thought that you wanted, you don't want. You know, like, I'm still on the fence. I don't even know if I really want to be married at this point because I've been single my whole life. I've never been married. i um, been engaged once. <laughs> been in love once. Um, and you could say, sadly, I've only been in love once. But I'm so good with that. I, I just, that's another mindset thing. So my desire to be somebody's wife has changed. Um, it's not to say that I would not do it, but it's, it's definitely not a priority for me. Because um, I'm just in a really good place emotionally right now that 
it I don't need a relationship with a man to define who I am um because a lot of times we as women a lot of black women um use relationships to define who you are and you feel like you're not complete unless you have someone now I know we are in the age of the strong black woman but that's a facade that is smoke and mirrors you know that and I know that too because deep down inside many of you really really want a man I mean I'm not saying I don't want one because I do but I'm just saying it's not something I obsess over I'm not afraid to be alone. I actually enjoy my own company because um, some women are afraid to be alone. I ain't one of them women. <laughs> I long to be alone. I really do. Because um, right now I live with family, so no, I'm not. <laughs> but that's a whole other story. Um, So my desires for that have changed. My desires uh, for material things have also changed. I'm noticing that the things that I used to, to love, I don't love so much no more. Now, I still love my uh, Kate Spade and Coach bags and stuff. I still, don't, I still love those. That has not changed. <laughs> I still love those and still want those. Thank you. And I make no apologies about that. But, like, I used to want, like, a certain type of car. And I've gotten to where I, I will see, because, I mean, hell, I live in Atlanta. And I'll see a, a luxury car or a, a really um, expensive sports car, and I feel absolutely nothing when I see it. I used to be like, whoa, wow, that is so cool. Yeah, no. Um, I the things that just used to matter just don't matter no more. And I've, I've even gotten to the place where, and I said this um, during the new moon in Virgo um, session that I did, I've gotten to where less is more, less means more to me, um, not having so much stuff, so much clutter and crap all over my house and everything if anything I want to feel like the empty spaces with like plants and pretty pictures but not too many pictures where it gets cluttered and ugh, I don't like a lot of stuff <laughs> I don't like a lot of stuff so yeah that's that's where I am so the blessings in the journey is the fact that I have enjoyed the shifts now some of them been really painful and some of the stuff that I've gone through it wasn't pretty. But I'm very grateful for them because it's shown me so much about myself, what I can do, what I can stand, what I can't stand, what I will put up with, what I won't put up with, what I will accept, what I won't accept, what I want, what I don't want. Because things that I thought that I wanted, after going through certain things in my life, I realized, yeah, I don't think I really want that so much. Glad I don't have it. Give thanks. <laughs> so that is why I said the blessing is in the journey because I had, if I hadn't gone through the things that I've gone through to be at this point where I am right now, I, I don't feel like I would have made it to this particular mindset, to this point in my life. If I hadn't had the journey of the good, the bad, and the ugly, and the really Good, bad, ugly, and the really fucked up. <laughs> That's the best way I can pronounce it or or describe it. So the blessing is in the journey. Everything that I just talked about, and I know I've been talking a while, but every part of that journey, every aspect of even going down what I felt was the wrong road of doing the starting over at 40, really was not wrong because it brought me to this point and it gave me that wasn't wrong the messages that were part of the starting over at 40 journey are still very much a part of the sacred pathway it's just that the sacred pathway is what i i was supposed to do i was supposed to do it that way in my mind 
but I also was supposed to do it the way I did it because it helps me get to where I am now. And that might not make sense to you, but if you sit and think about that, think about that for your life. If you hadn't gone through some of the stuff that you've gone through, would you really be where you are right now? Just think about that. If you hadn't gone through some of the bad breakups, the lost friends, lost jobs, the changes of careers, changes of locations, you know, um, and I'll say this because, I mean, I've dealt with illness and sickness and stuff too. If you hadn't gone through what you went through, um, an illness in your body or whatever, would you be where you are? Would you have some of the same thoughts and perspectives that you have right now? If you had just did a leapfrog jump from where you started to right where you are right now and you skipped over all the stuff that came in between, would you really have landed spot on to where you are now or would you have landed off somewhere else because you, you wouldn't be able to look at life the way you look at life now. You wouldn't be able to experience life the way you experience it now. And when I tell you that I can take you by the hand on the sacred pathway because it's your personal pathway and I can guide you into enlightenment and I can empower you and teach you how to embody your authentic self. That is what the sacred pathway to liberated black womanhood is all about. So thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you listening to me speak on um, my transition and how the blessing is in the journey um, because it truly, truly is. Uh, don't forget, I almost forgot it, but I don't want to forget. Join the free Facebook group that is specifically for the listeners of the Sacred Pathway podcast. Because we talk about these topics, we'll go in depth about these topics. Excuse me, my eye just did a little weird twitch. <laughs> we'll go in depth about these topics and we'll talk about other things. So join the um, free Facebook group. You go to tinyurl.com slash FB Pathway. That's tiny, T-I-N-Y-U-R-L dot com slash F as in Frank, B as in Bravo, Pathway. And yeah, let's build our community. Let's build this thing. And this is what we are using until my membership site is complete. And that's coming in December. I'm so excited. So yeah, that's all I have. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to this new podcast. It's me, Allison Rozelle, the Pathway Priestess. This is the Sacred Pathway to Liberated Black Womanhood podcast. I love you. Have a good day. All right, bye.